ready to go to school. And who's your daddy? What do you think of what's going on right now, mate? These evil little invisible parasites. Satan-worshipping Freemason moron. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're not run by factions. Get the fuck out of here! There are much more powerful international forces in play. Is this pig guy? Is this what pig guy is? I don't fucking know what's happening. Please get outside and look at the moon quickly. It's been crazy, guys, but guess what? It's how it is, mate. Mate, because I want to do it this way. But I ain't spending any time on it. Welcome to the Conditional Release Program, a podcast that delves into the nether world of cults, crims, and con artists. I'm Jack the Insider, otherwise known as Peter Hoisted for tax purposes. And I'm Joel Hill, and this week we are all over the place with news local and abroad. The world's a big place, but so is home. So it's been a bastard of a time for the poor sods from Lahaina and uh, Maui, those that actually managed to survive anyway, mm. who are now homeless and trying to rebuild their lives in the wake of a horrific wildfire that's just left them wondering what the fuck to do next. And now they are the unwitting focus of absurd conspiracy theories from cookers on TikTok who simply have to make everything all about them. They're the fucking main character in everything. Oh, and also Mountain Dew. Yes, it's about Mountain Dew, which is, is very weird. Real fucking weird. And uh, in other news, Eric, the good-looking boy, is living comfortably under a bus after his father hurled him under there. Oh, at least he's got a place in the family now. So we've also got sob sits up the wazoo. Well, not just sob sits, but sob sits sheriffs. You know, sob mm. sits with a gun and a badge. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong there? Mm. And for those keen for an update, Joe's house in Vanuatu, uh, Vanuatu, for which many listeners gave a bit of dough to help things along. Yes, you did. The real hero behind the drive, CRP mate Rob, has sent some pics uh, showing some big progress and we'll pop them up on our shit posting facey page so you can bask in the feel-goodedness. Yeah, but if that doesn't make you feel good enough, beer might bridge that gap. And specifically CBCO beer. Oh, it does. It's what I use uh, as, a, as a crutch in life in general. For those who need a reminder, it is free shipping. So those website prices are actually pretty bloody good. A case of 24 strong beers for 80 bucks is a steal. That's not bad. It's not bad. In any, it's like 6.5%, the IPA. I really, really like their IPA, but I do try and give their other beers some plugs because it's not just all about my craft beer wanker taste. So for those who do like a less spicy tin, the MIDI is a treat. I think it was only like 55 bucks. Wow. It's basically the same as Forex Gold. But it's a better yeah. drop. So, I just, yeah, it's a no-brainer. I, I used to buy Forex. I think I'm just going to start buying more beer because I don't – yeah, I, I usually drink through it in the first, you know, sort of couple of weeks. But anyway, go to cbco.beer and get yourself a case or three because these delicious tins will not crack themselves. So get oh. on with it. No, that's right. Beer. And while food. we're plugging stuff, we mustn't forget to plug ourselves. Yes. Now, I'm plugged right now, which is why I'm sitting funny. <laughs> Look, ask jokes aside, we have set up a Patreon for the show so you can help us keep this thing of ours, La Cosa Nostra, going. Yeah, simply go to www.patreon.com backslash the conditional release program. And for as little as five measly subs a month, you can support the show. We'd really appreciate it. Yeah, look, we have a Black Label premium episode available only for subscribers with lots yep. of sweat and defamation and character assassination <laughs> and there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of other stuff you can get as a patron including zoom chats with Joel and me and uh, well, well you, you can get that only if you give us some folding stuff that's the proviso give us some money and look that's enough for the housekeeping out of the way let's get this done so it's time to get on with the show and that means it's time for the conditional release programs weekly fortnightly well Weekly. When we release weekly. news, it's news. weekly. It's news. It's got a ring to it if we say weekly. There are two sides to the man, Donald J. Trump Sr., the family man and the business genius, and both were on display this week. Mm. See, the softer, more personal side of the gentle patriarch was exposed in a deposition he made last year, but has only just come to the surface. Yes. To be clear, we are not talking about any one of his 91 criminal indictments. Not them. But a civil case where the Southern District of the State of New York is seeking civil remedies to the tune of $250 million for what it alleges was gross tax evasion from within the Trump organisation. Yeah, and in that deposition, when asked if he was, and I quote, the ultimate decision-making authority within the Trump organisation, the loving dad under oath replied, no, my son Eric is much more involved with it than I am. I've been doing other things. Oh, my God. To be fair, I was president for four years. <laughs> Eric, the good-looking boy, has been thrown under the bar, under the bus by his dad, who he, who he loves. 
Oh, he does. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. Now, Eric hasn't made a public statement about his dad, who he loves, deposition. No. But probably because he's sort of under the bus. He is. It's a bit hard to talk when you're under the bus. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, to be fair, Eric didn't enjoy being under the bus at first. He banged his head on the muffler. (laughs) And he kept forgetting his body had a clearance of no more than two feet, so he smashed he's himself dead. up a bit early on. Aww. But now he's getting used to being under the bus. It's dry there, no rain. And then, <laughs> you know, the oil spills, which drip on him, have done wonders for his skin. Win-win. Oh. Mm, yeah. yeah. He's a happy camper and he's very grateful to his dad, who he loves, he loves. Yes. for throwing him under the bus. And he'll stay happily under the bus until such a time as Eric becomes personally liable for the fines. How's he two hundred and fifty million if Letitia James wins? Does he have that? Do you reckon Eric's got that? (laughs) Well, he's uh, he might have to fossick around uh, in the under the the seats in the in the gap between the seats and the bus. What do you reckon Uh, his wage is? You know, I don't know how much he's on. Oh, look, he'd just spend it all on moon pie and candy, wouldn't he? Eric, <laughs> but all this might be coming sooner rather than later. As oh, a dear. judge in New York on Wednesday said, there would be no delay to the start Ooh. of the civil trial. Uh, we have Letitia James, as we said before, uh, has uh, bunged on a $250 million lawsuit against former President Donald Trump and his namesake real estate, uh, uh, real estate company. So, Eric... The good news is, won't have to be under the bus too long. Yes, he's going to miss it though, because he has, he's grown fond of it. He has grown fond of (laughs) it. He likes it there. He does like it there. there. It feels like home. So now, from the kindly father figure, Donald Trump, to the business tyro, the commercial genius of Donald J. Trump. He's got stationery and everything, he's he's very smart. So while we're sticking with news, we have to go back a couple of years to when Trump left the White House and started what everyone thought would be a hugely successful exercise as a media company owner. Oh, mm. See, this this thing, diversify, right? You know? Yeah, yeah diversify. Good. It's going to be a, it was, it, it was just going to be a license to print money. Absolutely. He loves that, you know. Uh, so Trump himself envisioned a social media company that he said would, quote, stand up to the tyranny of big tech. Not only making money, but standing up to tyranny. Oh, Fantastic. good. I love a principled stand. It's really, really good. It's a win-win. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, there were visions of Trump vying for ratings from Fox News, but all he has to show for it now is true social. And I always want to say Trump social because he seems to be the only one on it. Yes, that's, that is true. Yes. Uh, but there have been signs recently that even the Trumpster may be tiring of his own social media play. Uh, there are an estimated 2 million users of True Social, 2 million, tiny compared with Facebook's 2.9 billion, Oof. YouTube's 2.5 billion, mm-hmm. WhatsApp's 2 billion, Instagram's 2 billion, and X, formerly known as Twitter, which counts about 541 million users. Yeah, not for long. Mm. Got a bit of a story to tell about uh, uh, Elon, uh, oh, who good. apparently apparently shut down uh, the Ukrainian internet because he thought when, when uh, after they attacked uh, Sebastopol uh, in the Crimea, uh, and uh, he thought that was going to draw a nuclear response, so he squibbed it. He's a coward. Yeah, such he's, a coward, Elon. He's also Putin pilled. Let's face it. Yeah, well, that's that's the explanation that's been given. Anyway, back to Trump. <laughs> Trump media was valued at $1.7 billion. Oh, that's good. And that's in US bananas, by the Ooh, way. That's a lot. And that was less than two years ago. Oh, it must be worth more now. But now, thanks to the Biden crime gang. Oh, no. What it happened? is currently worth just $100 million. Oh, Hunter. Hunter, what, what what won't you do with that magnificent cock of yours? He, might, he just swung his dick around and just devalued the company. He might have got Eric on the crack. Um, <laughs> look, we won't go into the potential on-again, off-again acquisition uh, as it is way too boring. Yes. But only a genius of the stripe of Donald J. Trump could turn a company with a market cap at $1.7 billion into a huge tax liability of just $100 million. Jesus Christ. Answering the question that not only does he have the requisite skills to become POTUS again, but that he also should be Secretary of the Treasury. Oh, yeah. And look, you know, at the same time, we can have a crack at uh, season 14 of The Apprentice. Why not? Yeah. 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 You know, business genius. Business, a business genius. genius. You know, you've got to keep the coffers filling I somehow. That's, I think that's where his career is going. I don't think he's going to be president. I think. Back the, to TV. I think, yep. Yeah. 
I think it's yeah. going to be The Apprentice again. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. And it'll be some sort of weird thing called like the Chief of Staff or some shit. And it'll yeah, here's one point seven billion. Here's no. one point seven billion. Turn it into a hundred million within forty eight hours. Yeah. I could do. It. I yeah, could do it. I've done it. I've done it. And, you know, and they're I've all, done it. They're all and struggling. And it was like, easy. I made these investments in crypto scams, but they're not getting back to me quick enough. And I can't actually do this. This is so difficult. <laughs> I just stood over share, shareholders, major shareholders as well. Yeah, and I remember that. Free that was, shares. That was, yeah. Free shares for his wife that now aren't worth anything. Yeah. And I don't think his marriage is going all that well. I can't imagine. She never looks happy, but she never looks happy. She has what they call a resting bitch face. Anyway, Eric's under the bus. Donnie's just moving forward with just the 91 criminal charges uh, to face over the next year or so. Um, but uh, we've got other uh, more pleasant parts of the world, or indeed generally pleasant, and that's yeah. Maui. Joel. Yes, this is a big story which we're going to try and make as little as possible because, God, this is huge. And like we're late to report on this because, you know, it's been sort of about a month since the Maui Island of Lahaina yeah. was ravaged by wildfires, but we've had other shit going on, but it's been in the back of my head. But the fires in Maui have reported to have killed over 110 people. Many remain missing. Many, many hundreds we more missing. We just don't know. It's They've got probably dogs about in there. a thousand deaths. It's yeah. pretty fucked up. So yeah, like you know, the 110 is still the mainstream media number, uh, but we just don't know. You know, you just don't know. Some may have simply evacuated and not been accounted for. That is very, very possible. But as we'll talk about later, the evacuation process was pretty fucked up. And a lot of them have been just sort of burned beyond any kind of recognition. You know, they've got these cadaver dogs yeah. that are trying to sniff out human remains, yeah. but it's not It's not That's easy. That's where so, a lot of the missing are, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. So it is believed the fire was started by power lines. Off the coast of Maui, there was Hurricane Dora, a bastard of a storm that wasn't close enough to make landfall, but still close enough to generate strong gusty winds, which in a fire situation, not a good thing. And most storms will bring rain with them, you know, like it's windy and it's rainy, but this was too far away. It was just the wind, not the rain. So basically, conditions in Maui were considered to be a drought. There hasn't been much rain in the area. So conditions were incredibly dry when the fire started, and then strongly accelerated by winds that went up to 100 kilometres an hour. Yeah, a perfect storm, a terrible cliche, I guess it is, but uh, also attributable to the extent of damage was the fact that basically um, this particular part of Maui is essentially a vast plantation. Ah. And and that plantation for pineapples and sugar. So okay. those things become even more flammable. Yeah, they just go up. I mean, yeah, sugar fields, you, sugar cane fields are famous for being sort of well, burned they, off. Yeah, they're deliberately burned, yeah. That's what happens, yeah. And those, those fires are huge. So we had dry conditions and strong winds. And all you needed was a spark. Security camera footage has captured images of a flash in a forest around 10 uh, 47 p.m. local time on August 7th. It suggests that a tree fell on a power line during a strong wind gust. Uh, a power outage immediately followed the recorded incident. The utility company Hawaiian Electric is under investigation as to whether they have not only started the fire but neglected to implement measures to prevent it. This is very similar to the bushfires in Melbourne about 15 yep. years ago or, or in, in Greater Melbourne where uh, a Royal Commission subsequently found that to be the case. Mm-hmm. Why the hell were there power lines so close to trees that could fall and start a fire? That's a basic maintenance issue. Basic. That's, that's, why, that's one of the reasons you pay your electric bill. Mm -hmm. The company claims to have a robust wildfire mitigation plan, which includes vegetation management and a policy to shut off power when high winds are expected. A lawsuit alleges that the utility failed to perform these measures. Won't be the last lawsuit, by the way, folks. No, they're stacking up really big. And, you know, it's been a while since, but, yeah, everyone's lining up to kick these guys in the head. And so be it. You know, they seem to really fuck this up. But add to that the shambles of an emergency response or so it seems on face value. You see, one example of this is that Maui has loud warning sirens, which were not activated, which is all over the mainstream media. This this is a decision that resulted in the resignation of the top emergency management official, Herman and Dyer. He cited health reasons for why he went, but yeah, really? But he said also that he did not regret the decision, saying that, quote, the public is trained to seek higher ground in the event that the siren is sounded, because they're basically primarily used for tsunamis. Tsunamis, yeah. He went on to say, had we sounded the siren that night, we were afraid that people would have gone Malka. And Malka apparently means to the mountainside. And if that's the case, he said, then they would have gone into the fire. So there was a logic behind not sounding the siren, but everyone's going, he didn't sound the siren. He's a piece of shit. And a lot of cookers are saying, well, they didn't sound the siren because it was intentional. 
and they wanted people to die. So that's an interesting angle. But the optics, of course, on this were absolutely fucked. Um, he's just been absolutely destroyed publicly, so he had to go, despite the fact that he had method to his madness. Another piece of sort of incidental misinformation is that they did not send text messages or broadcast information, but they did. The issue here is the power had been out for hours at this point. Many people's mobile phone batteries had already run out. Messages were broadcast over television and radio to an island without power. Well, there would have been shit mobile reception. No one's TV was turning on. Who's got a battery-operated radio anymore? So even if the messages were received, it should be remembered, and this is such a sore point from sure a lot of people, that the Hawaiian Emergency Broadcast System sent out a false alert in 2018, which said, all in caps on text message. Yeah, we all remember this. Ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. That's the thing, man. This is not a drill is the fucking keyword on that. And it was also broadcast on television. And the broadcast on television stated this. Uh, the US Pacific Command has detected a missile threat to Hawaii. A missile may impact on land or sea within minutes. This is not a drill. Again, in caps. Mm -hmm. If you are indoors, stay indoors. If you're outdoors, go indoors. No. If you are outdoors, <laughs> seek immediate shelter in a building. Well, Remain indoors, well away from windows. If you are driving which is technically indoors, uh, pull safely to the side of the road and seek shelter in a building or lay on the floor. Okay. We will announce when the threat has ended. In caps again, this is not our drill. Take immediate action measures. Just fucking mental. This is not a drill. Like That is just the thing. This is not a drill. It took them 38 minutes to send a message clarifying that it was a false alarm. 38 mm. minutes. <laughs> people would have lost their fucking minds, man. So you can imagine how like text messages may have also been received in a fairly unenthusiastic manner. There's fires. Oh yeah, I can smell smoke, but fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, this yeah, a drill? Yeah. Is this one a drill? Yeah, you promised this nuclear holocaust, uh, you know, and nothing happened. So what, what am I expected to do now? It's just ridiculous. So adding to this, the main road out of town was blocked by police and utility workers who were attending to down power lines. That this, was the worst of it, I think. Yeah, well, and this. Yeah, well, so you've just seen all value. these cars, this long line of cars just all burned out. Oh, totally, Pre yeah. People in them. Well, yeah, it led to Incinerated inside. Well, some people jumped into the sea, um, but, yeah, it is it's said that some people died in their cars, which is insane. And there's this sort of, like, you know, evacuation that essentially trapped people. The thing that hasn't been talked about so much, it's this idea of them blocking the roads to clear these power lines, which, I mean, look, you can't really drive over power lines anyway. So, like, you know, the, the roads weren't going to magically be clear for people, but what they did is they not only blocked the roads to clear these power lines, but they started doing restorative repairs on them, just dawdling around, putting up the poles, trying to fix them up. Well, this is why people were stuck pole. behind a roadblock. Wait, get a new pole. Let's get a move, new pole. Move the pole and move out of just the way. Just get the fucking line out of the way Insane. and get cars out. So yeah. insane. So obviously there's this catnip to cookers who are going to come up with all sorts of theories about this. And as you say, like, you know, there are these famous pictures of these burned out cars that are absolutely charred in these queues to leave town. While these fucking dickheads are like, oh, we better fix these lines. Oh, I don't like the look of this one. Oh, yeah, look, yeah. it was a complete and utter disaster. Hawaii is a little bit like that. Mm. Um, you know, in terms of public administration, it's all a little bit lazy. They've got a very good governor, um, but the people underneath him, mm, not so sure. And this is what we always talk about. When you're looking for the conspiracy, always all the, all the stuff up, always go with the stuff up first. Yeah, and there were a chronic number of serious mistakes made. But you're not here for the mainstream coverage of this horrid event. God, no, you're here for the cooker takes, listeners. Oh, yeah, every time, yeah, every time. And there's plenty. There are plenty. And as a disclaimer, I just want to say up front, there is nothing funny about this tragedy. None I mean, at nothing at all. This is horrid. But the dumb shit the cookers have come up with to explain this tragedy is kind of funny. So we're going to have a look what they came up with. But I don't want to make light of this. I need to make a big separator between the tragedy of Maui and the opportunistic fuckhead clout chasers who have tried to make this all about them by spreading disinformation and misinformation that centers them as the most interesting person in the room who knows a secret no one else does. Yeah. Fuck them. Fuck them so much. Yeah, this yeah. is disgusting ghoul behavior. You gotta hate it. You gotta hate and, it. And we report on that. That's what we do. So, you know, we're gonna do our job. So, the general consensus is the fire was started by a direct energy weapon or DEW. 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 
Okay. Remember so, that, folks. Yeah, Jew. I know, totally. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds like Jew as well, but I haven't really seen anything like that, so I'm kind of glad. So some say it came from space. Some say it mm-hmm. actually came from drones. Um, mm-hmm. There's no basis for either of these, no. uh, of course, except for some uh, images. Uh, but there are images, which is great. You know, like oh, yeah. got, it's a smoking gun. You know, one image clearly shows a beam from the sky and smoke on the ground. It's like a smoking laser. It's like burning into the ground. Of course, that image is from 2018. Uh, it was a SpaceX launch in California where you could see the trail of the rocket. Oh, and yeah, so, bit of Elon's um, work. And yeah. five years ago, Joel. Yeah. So that's dumb. In another place. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to take that image and we're going to use that, even though it's nothing to do. Anyway, that's what cookers are like. You know, you guys, you guys know that. You know, they, they claim that everyone's dead from vaccines, blah, blah. But, okay, hold on. There is another image a huge explosion with a giant beam coming from the sky. Got it? Yeah. So this has been used by about a million TikTok clout chasers to say that it is a direct energy weapon from space. Surprise, surprise. The image is also from 2018. The fire is in Michigan and the light coming from the sky is a phenomenon called a light pillar, something that is seen in colder months because nature is sometimes a bit weird. And and beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of pretty. And Michigan and Hawaii... Fair distance. Fair distance away. Fair distance away. So this going to say about 10,000 kilometres. It's just not as fun to think, you know, okay, there are these Jewish space lasers, they're super hectic, we're being, we're under threat by elites, or some bloke's garage blew up in Michigan and there was a cool little light column behind it and someone took a photo of it and thought it looked pretty cool. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, there you let's, go. let's go with the Jewish space lasers, guys, because that's more fun. One theory that is piggybacked on the back of this idea is that direct energy weapons are programmed to avoid certain colors. You may have seen this because this has gone crazy mainstream. This is so nuts. It's so fucking dumb. Uh, so in this instance, it's the color blue. And there are several theories, one of which was that the blue hats, the UN peacekeepers, they are basically blue. and Pale the, blue, yes. Those, yeah, and those, those, that is blue because they need to be spared by direct energy weapons, uh, oh. which I'm sure have been used in the past in a million different ways because of mm, blah, blah, cooker mm, shit. Mm, mm, mm. But the juicy reality of it is that a bunch of celebrities and houses on Maui have painted their properties blue, which is a smoking gun. Yeah, so well, in this it, situation, you well, you've got elites who – are insides, insiders on this. So they know about the blue. And they know about the blue, so they painted their houses blue. And blue is a traditionally quite ugly colour for a house, right? So these houses look ridiculous, but they're painted blue. So TikTok is blown up with this, and idiots have been doing experiments with lasers to see if they actually do spare blue things from their lasery death burning wrath. Yeah, the cookers are pointing the fingers at uh, the usual suspects, and that includes celebrities, well, mostly, Oprah, Obama, the Clintons, Tom yep. Hanks, yep. Ellen DeGeneres, Chrissy Teigen, and Kid Rock. How did Kid Rock get in there? I don't know. I don't know. He's just not, yeah, I don't know. Maybe like they're angry at him for having a Bud Light recently. I don't know. Yeah, I guess, well, it just makes no sense. No. Uh, the rest are absolute staples of uh, QAnon folklore, including Teigen, who after criticising Trump became a target of horrific abuse from 4chan fuckwits. Yeah, they think she's a child sex trafficker. It's real fucking weird. Mm. So the proof of the Blue House theory is an article from October October 2022 in Architectural Digest, which Uh I'm guessing exists. Um, It does, yes. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, it's a digest on architecture. Great. To absolutely no one's surprise, the article, the screenshot, is completely fabricated. The article doesn't exist. It's completely fucking made up. So this reeks of a 4chan prank, uh, but I can't really see AI, AI 4chan prank? Um, oh, I just think they basically just Photoshop. I, I can't see anything about this though because there's no, um, you know, there's no obvious public discussion of how how we're going to do this. Mm. But this is the thing, man. People are stupid. There are pictures circulating TikTok of blue objects spared by the fire. They've got blue cars, blue umbrellas. These pictures don't show the immediate surrounds, which are also spared. There was a car next to the blue car, which was also not as singed as the other cars. So they don't also show the other random houses that didn't burn down that aren't fucking blue. Fire is a weird fucking thing. Some of the trees didn't burn down because they got moisture in the middle. Okay, cool, whatever. But dickheads on TikTok are trying to pretend they understand the force of nature and they're now making right-wing chuds think they should paint their houses <laughs> blue. This, like, is, this could be this could be a boom time for Dulux paints. I, honestly, I just But only in blue. I'm so annoyed by the world. Anyway. How, so, does, Oprah, how does Oprah get into this? Oh, Oprah's into everything. she got everything. a house on Maui, I guess. Well, almost. So almost. She's, in, she's been basically centred in this because she's a part of the conspiracy to start the fires. And this 
goes into the central tenet of the theory, which is a land grab. The land grab theory is basically the main crux of this whole entire conspiracy theory. And it does actually have a kernel of truth to it. There will be, a, there is a kernel of truth about it. There is a kernel right. of truth the, to the, it. Lahaina was actually one of those areas that developers were very keen to get into very keen, before yes. the fire. Mm. Yes, and it's a very expensive area as well. So this idea that everyone there is like fucking working class and like they've really set this narrative that everyone there whose houses have burned down are poor, no. They were very expensive and most of the poor people were renting and under severe rental stress. But you see, when it comes to Oprah, what she wants is she wants a bigger house. She wants to expand her estate and she wants to have more houses in Maui for reasons that... I'm not quite understanding. Does she have any houses in Maui? She does. She does. Ah, well, there you go. Yeah, see, uh, the only issue with that is that her house is 40 miles away from the fires. But it's a big house. But it's a big house. (laughs) But it's 40 40, miles away. But not 40 miles long. It's also not blue. So they've made this Ah. huge big deal about how her house was spared by the fires. There's talk of the fact that she... Uh, apparently employed a private firefighting firm. Um, I can't imagine she would have done that considering um, 40 miles is 40 miles really away. far. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't Probably know about that. So, not. Yeah, I'd say the conspiracy behind why her um, her house was spared was the uh, concept of distance. Yes, geography. Yeah, 40 geography. miles. Yes, 40 miles. Yes, yeah, yeah. Actual, like, actual Barack distance. Barack Obama, the famous Kenyan Hawaiian. Yes, yes, the real Kenyan who's got a house in Hawaii to, you know, protect his story, has a property that was also spared. And on Twitter, a dickhead Q influencer, I'm not going to name because fuck him, posted this. Breaking. Why do they do that? I know. It's so Avi Yemeni. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not as if you're in the media. I know. Breaking. The Obama's estate was spared from the Maui fires in Hawaii. Out of all of the destruction in Hawaii, not a single blade of grass was burned at the Obama estate. Yeah. You see, I actually take issue with that on one level because I would say on any given day, uh, blades of grass are burned at the Obama estate with him flicking Marlboros into his lawn um, Mm. and having his groundskeepers pick them up after him. But (laughs) the other issue is that Obama's house is 100 miles from the fires, 100 miles on a different island. A different Different island. Different yeah. island. So, like, other than that, it's really suspect. Other than the 100 miles, different island. Remember? And completely distance. untouched by fire. Untouched. Untouched entirely. Well, the direct energy weapons didn't didn't fire there. I wonder why. Yeah. Crazy to think. So the main culprits behind the land grab theory are apparently BlackRock and Vanguard. They're the greedy elites who are trying to grab the land. Uh, These are two huge investment firms that sell index funds to mum and dad investors and massive investments and hedge fund services to elites. And these are not good people. BlackRock and Vanguard are two firms who are leading the charge in using ESG as a guide to investment. And ESG stands for Environmental, Social and Corporate Governance. These are metrics upon which people with bleeding hearts decide to invest in stuff. And you can have a index fund on ethical firms and you can invest in that and then you make money from climate change mitigation strategies and isn't that fucking wonderful? Everyone's making no money. Call. No How call. How great. No call. But generally speaking, if you're thrashing the planet and you don't have women in your boardroom, then they might not invest in your company and that's really upsetting. But if you do have women in your boardroom and you're thrashing the planet a little bit less than other companies, then they might talk business with you. Now, conservatives fucking hate this because they're chuds who seem to be hell-bent on making the world, uh, you know, sort of uh, implode and burn. Maybe something to do with their religion, I don't know. But it's a huge part of this sort of Mercer-led conspiracy universe that seems to want to ensure the shareholder interests are absolutely front and centre of all economic discussions and the idiots in the conspiracy universe are frothing at the mouth for reasons they don't really understand about ESG because... Fucking Tucker Carlson told them it's a pinko communist takeover of good old-fashioned capitalism and they just nod and agree like mindless fucking drones. So investments from these firms have triggered the ire of idiot Republicans who claim that their investments in firms combating climate change must be stopped. There's antitrust issues. There's all sorts of things. But it just reeks of the fucking Heartland Institute and their disinformation daddy, Robert Mercer. He is a terrible human being and his fingerprints are all over this shit. Yeah, just just, uh, just very quickly, uh, Tucker Carlson actually made allegations that Barack Obama is gay. Yeah, made I saw that. The week. And, yeah. Uh, and, of course, as we all know, his wife is a man. Yes, that is a big, big, big one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So there was a bloke who uh, basically claimed they spent a on, uh, on cocaine. Um, which is uh, very controversial, except for the fact that cocaine is great and shut the fuck up. So BlackRock and Vanguard are being stitched up as being sort of behind this. They did the Jewish space laser to burn the island, to buy the property, to make the money, right? Fair enough. 
I guess that's it then. You know, wrap that up in a bow. Throw Oprah in there because apparently she's buying some more land. I'm guessing mm-hmm. she was like, you know, the one who organized the Jewish space. Well, laser. she's already got that 40 mile long house. Yes, yes, exactly. Not even touched. And not Bill touched. Gates. And, and not um, even blue. No, no, no. She, yeah, she didn't even get blown. Um, Gates, he'd have a joint in Hawaii, wouldn't he? Uh, I don't know, but they're putting him in into it. He's, they're just involving him. And Jeff Bezos is a big part in there. There might be some yeah. sort of kernel of truth as to why he's involved. I don't care. He probably has a house in every fucking city. So while this is mostly made of ideological nonsense implanted in the brains of idiots by the elites through Tucker Carlson and other talking heads who are funded by uh, these think tanks like the Heartland, they are basically being told by other elites that they're not meant to be upset about to be upset about other elites they are meant to be upset about <laughs> Because Damn that's how elites. this works. Damn those elites. They're so confusing. Um, they can, you can only anger at certain elites because some elites are actually good elites and the other elites are bad elites. And it's only lefty elites that are bad elites, even though there are no lefty elites. BlackRock and Vanguard are trying to peel back their ESG investments like fucking crazy because they're finding out that actually right. destroying the environment is really profitable. That's and right. Then- and their shareholders are kicking back on them saying, no, we want, you know, we're all bleeding heart bitches. It's very funny. Um, I was reading about it before, but I didn't put it in there. Uh, a lot of big boring. finance companies are rejecting ASG. It's, it's, it's just quite true. They're, when it gets, when it goes sort of top down into a company, it actually becomes almost impractical to to do this sort of ethical stuff. You've got style. a fiduciary duty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and I know of one particular financial institution that tried to un- un- unroll all this stuff and went, oh, Jesus, this is awful. But then you've got shareholder activists who basically <laughs> buy shares in the company, turn up to the meeting and say, bitch, please, I want you to divest from fossil fuels. And they kind of have to because they have to answer their shareholders. But then they've got other shareholders who get pissy at them for not making as much money as they could be if they're investing in, I don't know, like killing kids or whatever. So there's that. Um, and when I say killing kids, I mean through the emissions of fossil fuels that legitimately kill children with asthma. Anyway, fun. And hippies uh, support that uh, when they talk about uh fossil fuels being the best thing ever. Anyway, fuck them. And while large investment firms are almost certainly going to try and buy low and sell high from this tragedy, it's that's what capitalism creates. People have been receiving calls to sell their properties, but not from fucking BlackRock, but parasite realtors looking to make a quick buck from flipping burned out houses at bargain rates from desperate people. Textbook. And this is the kernel of truth that led to Hawaiian Governor Josh Green working on a moratorium on land transactions in Lahaina in the wake of the wildfires. He said this. Yeah, quite a capable bloke is Josh Green, like the it. governor of Hawaii. He said, my intention from start to finish is to make sure that no one is victimised from a land grab. Uh, people are right now traumatised. Please do not approach them with an offer to buy their land. Do not approach their family saying they'll be much better off if they make a deal because we're not going to allow it. Yep. Yeah, so like I said, consp- good man. Yeah, totally. I mean, look, they, they're um, the conspiracy universe will not give this guy a break. It's fucking irritating. They can't even take this as a win, even though this completely stops the idea of there being a land grab because he's going to legislate that it can't happen. He's a Democrat, and they refuse to give him a single lick of credit. They are even going as far as saying that the emergency housing that they're organising is a way of giving money to landlords. Yeah, rent. That's a concept. That you, did you just learn about that? Yeah. They're renting houses for victims of a fire and the landlord gets the rent. Um, it's amazing they think this is somehow a part of a conspiracy to just rehome people. What yeah. the fuck? Anyway, yeah. look, it would be great if they didn't naturalize them. But yeah, whatever. So basically to summarize, Lahaina is a very expensive area which has been in a housing crisis for some time. Locals are being priced out. For those who have held on, they're sitting on absolute gold mines. The cooker line is these locals that refuse to sell to investors who are sitting on a shitload of money in real estate. This is what prompted the fire because the investment companies wanted to buy it and they refused to do so. It's a very simple black and white story. It's complete bullshit because while many locals have refused to sell their properties to firms seeking to build resorts in the area and local governments have also prevented development in certain policies and things like that, the homes in the area start around $1 million. This is not a working class area. The average renter, the average working class person, pays 42% of their income for housing. It's so it's this, mm. but like I've been listening to podcasts and there's this bleeding heart shit about how the locals basically own the entire place and their culture is being decimated by these evil forces. But the thing is, is the local culture was already being decimated by capitalism. But this is something cookers are famously fond of. They love capitalism because they're told to by capitalists. So the conspiracy universe is using Hawaiian culture as a way to add to their conspiracy theories and it's been fucking gross to watch because like these guys give a 
left-handed fuck about any ethnicity except for their own. This narrative of the locals mm. refusing to sell to the elites, the elites they don't like because they just pick which elites are coming in there and trying to prey on these vulnerable people, there's a partial truth to it. These realtors, these uh, these firms, they are calling these people and trying to get them to sell their houses in one of the most vulnerable times in their fucking lives. Because even if you're a multimillionaire, losing your house will leave you feeling pretty fucking out of the, out of out of sorts. Is there, are they the worst people on earth, real estate agents? They fucking work toward it, don't they? They Jesus really do sake. work toward yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to any real I'm estate agents who are listening. At it. But working like, at it. You can be the exception to the rule. If real estate agents are listening, you know that you can be ethical. It's just that most of your comrades are not. Mm-hmm. So this is the thing. You know, this whole thing is just exaggerated to make way for the theory that the fire was lit in the pursuit of profit and to destroy the culture and blah, blah, fucking blah. But these TikTok theories are dumb. The Telegram ones are very amusing. Because they've got really, really whacked out shit here. So one claim is that barium and aluminium, this is a classic mix among chemtrail enthusiasts, were sprayed into the atmosphere, which were then activated by 5G towers. Well, there you go. It created some sort of radiation that had created some sort of intense heat. They didn't say how that works, um, but I guess we don't need to know that. Well, Thanos Paniedis showed us exactly what happens to the moon when 5G is just let rip. Yeah, yeah, that did happen. That did happen. It was very, very alarming. Go outside people of Melbourne and look at the moon and it was like, yeah, look, you guys in Melbourne don't have your own moon. It's the same moon. We all have the same moon, Thanos. That is a very good point. Uh, Yeah, luckily he actually exposed that plan. Otherwise, Melbourne was going to be vaporised by the Mm. moon. Um, Yeah, by the moon. He was on top of it and uh, and that deep state had to pull their plans out. So the other thing is that electric vehicles are being used as bombs. What? Yeah. I mean, look, to be quite honest, a lithium battery and a fire shouldn't mix. Um, That's a chat we can have. I'm happy to have that conversation. It can be a bit yucky, yes. But of course it can't be that. It has to be the fact that the deep state detonated electric cars remotely as a part of the fire. Of course. That was a part of the thing. Through the 5G or just what they've got remote control? And just go, okay, bang. Oh, they, got didn't, one. they didn't stipulate, unfortunately. Didn't stipulate? Nah. I just thought the direct energy weapons would be enough, but you know, look, I'll a bit bases, of detail right? there on that conspiracy. Yeah, why not? So, the other aspect of this is the emergency response. Now, I absolutely love parts of this, but it's also very fucking sad. Don't so, while the stuff up. Because there Sorry. were absolute, yeah, well, there were mistakes made, right? You know, like there were, there, you know, this is, it was unfortunate. Of course, this was all intentional. So, all the mistakes were actually intentional parts of the plan carried out by the emergency workers because they were all jabbed. People who didn't take the jab were stood down as emergency workers. So they only had jabbed emergency workers, which had nanobots inside them. These right. nanobots were activated by, you guessed it, 5G towers. Oh, that's where, yeah. And this was to ensure that the deep state plan was carried out perfectly. So they're, they're all under control. They're un, they're being controlled by 5G. They sort of start, you know, they're putting their hands out in front of, it, in front of themselves Frankenstein style and just yeah. get about doing whatever the 5G has told them to do. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, exactly. It's just in, insane theory. Um, people fucking believe this. And, uh, and of course, there were unfortunate theories around the idea that people were vaccinated and basically just remotely detonated as people, um, which is interesting. Just mm, a yeah, bit of internal, just, bit of bit of combustion. Yeah, yeah, that that mm. that's yeah. So that's fucking dumb. Um, but my yep. favorite part, my favorite part is this, and I've saved it for last. It is that- good. The blaze has been attributed to a DEW, which is DEW, direct, direct energy, energy weapon. weapon, but also dew, mountain dew, mountain dew, mountain dew. I mean, there's mountains in Hawaii. There's mountain dew, right? Like you know, so they they're just drawing links, and it's dumb. So Stu Peters, the fucking idiot, said this: Did Mountain Dew participate in predictive programming with their soda flavor called Maui Burst? which depicted Maui in flames. Uh-huh. All right, cool. So Mountain Dew, which is in the US often abbreviated to MDN-DEW. Uh, MTN-DEW. Yes, Surely. MTN, yes. 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 Uh, has become a whole cook or folklore thing. Oh, dear. They so one aspect of this that I found on a Telegram page is that in 2021, Mountain Dew produced a commercial with BBDO, which is just an international ad firm, that showed some dudes watching some sports ball eating some hot wings. Cool. They're on fire because the hot wings are hot. And they ask, what's fire? You know, like what's cool, right? And they say Mountain Dew and spicy wings. And then they drink some Mountain Dew and it extinguishes the flames. One of the guys, and this is not something they actually brought up in the Telegram post, but something I noticed, is uh, sort of the Japanese appearance, possibly sort of Hawaiian origin because, you know, there's the Japanese influence down there. Yes, Um, there is. 
And uh, I, I think that they could have expanded on that. They didn't though. Uh, but basically, yeah, uh, I just, I find that this is one of those things where like maybe what Mountain Dew were trying to do is use the direct energy weapon to set the island on fire and then showing the ad to people who are awake and know what they're talking about suggesting they should use Mountain Dew to fight the fires. It's a license to print money. Imagine how many liters of Mountain Dew they could have used to fight the fires. It worked on the guys on <laughs> the couch. It worked on the guys on the couch. They went out. They went out almost immediately. Haven't Mountain Dew gone into sort of more and more hotter drinks, spicier drinks? They've got, you know, they, they, and, and I guess this is one of them, the, the Maui, what is it called? The Maui Burst. Maui, Maui, but they're yeah. actually spicy, hot drinks, if you know what I mean. They're- Probably more like a sort of cinnamon-type hot, but uh, either way, they sound fucking disgusting. Um, yeah, they do sound corn really, really bad. I, I've seen there's, there's a guy I follow on Instagram who goes around all the all the, all the Fast food restaurants and rates them, and uh, he was no, on the Maui. Uh, he was on the, the Mountain Dew various types, and and yeah, there were a couple there that looked to be undrinkable due to the temperature. Well, not the temperature. What 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 do you call it? the you know the, the sort the of spice? Yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, interesting. Well, look, uh, I hope none of you ever had the mis- uh, misfortune. Anyway, it, it, it certainly didn't look like it would put a fire out. No, maybe that was – well, they want to make it worse, right? You know, if you spray spicy drinks on fire, it just makes them worse, yeah. right? So, there's, yeah, there's a just, logic like, here. just like throwing water on an electrical fire. Boom, off you yeah. go. Yeah, which kind of probably happened here. So the flavour is, as I say, Maui Burst. Um, and it is being seen as a satanic communication of what was to come. It was basically just of predictive course, programming, as Stu Peter said it. So the first thing you think of. But you can't fucking stop there. You've got to keep going. So Baja Blast is a Mountain Dew flavor, which is now apparently another satanic prediction of the recent natural disaster in Baja, California, Mexico, due to Hurricane Hillary. Ooh. Yeah, that just happened. Yeah, but it, I think Baja was pretty much spared. I mean, nah, it, 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 there was a bit of damage. Don't. We don't deal in facts here. No, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's that's absurd. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Silly but you are me. right. You are right. I did I did phrase that as a natural disaster in Baja California. There was a hurricane near Baja California, which yeah. cookers are now freaking out about. There wasn't much about the fact that it was named Hillary, which, as you've told me a million times, is a randomly selected by computer name thing. It is. They always um, are. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, look, look. If I saw Baja Blast and uh, Hurricane Hillary, I'd be jumping to all sorts. Of yeah, questions. there you go. There you Mostly go. about adrenochrome and children, which uh, we, we'll get to that in a sec. So this has basically led on to Mountain Dew Pitch Black, which features a planet with the word Dew on it and a black tin. It is a prediction of coming blackouts. Now, Klaus Schwab, ooh, bad man. Ooh, he yeah. is apparently warned of a potential vulnerability to cyber attack and utility companies. Reasonable. That would cause blackouts reasonable yeah. but actually this is just a cover for the dastardly plan to carry out the mountain dew plan let me just pull you up there mountain dew from memory pepsico yep not a coke yeah okay yeah okay yeah so they yeah. must be involved somewhere oh, and PepsiCo. kfc pull and pizza Hut. yep all part of the um brands umbrella mm, okay yeah it's all happening mate it's all happening next we're going to see fucking fried chicken theories god damn it leave yes. kfc alone you fuckers yeah hey that, that you'll be you'll just be going too far then. I draw the line. Basically, Pakistan and India will just be like, no, no, no. I'm going to kill all of you Americans now. Fuck you. <laughs> and and the Caribbean. They just love they just KFC love in the shit. Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. Do not fuck with the subcontinent, guys. It will go it will work out real bad for you. They're sleeping. They're sleeping, just waiting for it. So this has led to elaborate theories about a Mountain Dew clock that is predicting a natural disaster. <laughs> all over the place based on these fucking flavors, all of them being executed by elites. And this is that thing of like, you know, basically telling you're going to do it beforehand by taunting us as, you know, as normies. But these geniuses have uncovered the truth. And now I guess we just have to wait around and see what Mountain Dew flavor fucks us next. Um, (laughs) It's uh, the the, the thing is, it's not even just future incidents. There's ones in the past. So Mountain Dew Code Red was released four months before 9-11. Code Red. Right, right. Is that right. is that really? Like, did we even call 911 Code Red? We, we ignored them, though. When they said Code Red, we said, sounds delicious, as opposed to, shit, we'd better get those planes in order. I'm sure they're going to hit the towers soon. Yeah, it's a symbolism, right? So the Mountain Dew clock is going to continue to be baked by idiots into some sort of weird form of bread, and these people just think that everything is a predictive programming message from elites bringing doom upon the masses, depopulating and fucking whatever. Anything to pretend this shit isn't being caused by climate change and also anything to avoid the reality that God is avenged for one who seems to enjoy fucking with his subjects by sending big winds and lots of rain into places that really could do without it. Yes. Sorry, maybe your God's a bit of a cunt if that's the case. Just saying. 
A vast majority of the disinformation being spread yes, has been be. on TikTok. It is an absolute haven for clout chasing fuckwits who crave attention. And this has been an absolute goldmine for people in the attention economy. They are chuchinging over this. They've even made it about child trafficking. Apparently they're about to expose what? child trafficking on the area in the area. Yeah. And that's why oh, they had to blow the place I see. up. To and burn the evidence. The Mountain Duke people came in and see you oh, later. It's all linked. All it's been all wiped. linked. Yeah. It's all linked. I'm kind of making that part up. But the child trafficking thing, I'm not. That's actually – that's a God, problem. that's awful. They're fucking idiots. And also they're saying that – so there's, These people there's, are fucking ghouls, aren't they? They really are just fucking ghouls. One thing that I find offensive is their imagination. Um, so, like, they're claiming that missing children from the fires are now being trafficked. I no. mean, why would, you, why would your brain go to that? Yeah. Why would your mind go to that? You're well, sick. How could anyone buy the Mountain Dew thing? How could anyone buy that? Most you people think have, it's dumb. I mean, I, I guess most people do, but there will be but some who actually, that There's must heaps. be some sort of, you know, sort of IQ cross reference. If you believe in the Mountain Dew thing, come with me, come with me. You know, yeah. it's time. It's time we sat you down with her and uh, and kept you away from sharp things. Look, basically put them in a straitjacket at this point because there's just no, there's no, there's no point. And certainly, this is just a reason we need to really have a long, long look at democracy as a concept because these people vote. Anyway, look to cover all the claims that have been made in videos on that godforsaken platform TikTok would take fucking hours. There are so many, and they come in so many different forms. But these are the basics: that it was intentional, it was a laser, it was a land grab. It involves Oprah, BlackRock, and Tom Hanks. And That's Mountain basically Dew. it. And, and Mountain, Mountain Dew. Dew. And Mountain Dew. Yeah. 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 I just, these people are, yeah. What do we do? Very, what do you do with them? very, very odd. It's really uh, rare that I'm that I'm shocked and surprised, but I am this time. Now, Both. on the conditional release program, we have an occasional segment. This is called our court roundup, or as we like to call it. We'll see you guys later. A lot fucking later. <laughs> Unless you're convicted in the Australian Capital Territory, that is. Well, we'll see about that. So the longest cab off the rank was Proud Boy leader Enrique Tarrio, a man his sentencing judge described as the ultimate leader, the ultimate person who organised, who was motivated by revolutionary zeal. Oof, judge words right there. Ooh. Relating to the January 6, 2021 attempt to overturn the result of the US election. He was sentenced to 22 years for seditious conspiracy. And pro- wow, wow. Prosecutors wanted 33. Prosecutors on a 33, and I got cut back by two thirds. Hey, it's got to be a win for Henri. Oh, yeah, 22. In court, Tario said he was sorry for the events of January 6 and credited police officers for their bravery in resisting the attack. Oh, shut the fuck up. He also said, quote, what happened on January 6 was a national embarrassment. You don't fucking mean that. He also said that he both now knew that Donald Trump lost to Joe Biden. Well done, you. And blamed himself for the actions that led to losing his freedom. Uh, yeah, cool. Well done. Yeah, with salty tears in his eyes, Tarrio said, Oh, God. I do not think what happened that day was acceptable. Okay. No, don't you. <laughs> Road to Damascus conversion. Oh, mate, I believe everything you're saying, 100%. He's going to need a hobby, Joel, isn't he? he will. 22 yeah. years, you're going to need a hobby just to get you through that, I think. I've never you know, n- known how maybe bridge Maybe crochet. Works. I think bridge. Um, bridge is complex. It takes a long time knitting, to learn. Pick up yeah. knitting. Something yeah, actually, like that. You know, in the um in the crochet circles, it's mostly female dominated uh, sort of sector, but there is a male uh sort of offshoot of the crochet community and it's called brochet. Brochet. They call like themselves it. brocheters. Alright. And the girls call themselves hookers as well. Because oh, they use hooks. Isn't yeah, that funny? They're crazy yeah. knitters. You yeah, be, be well, very, very ah, careful around. Not them. knitters, crocheters. They're hookers. I had an arty once. We basically had to pull her up and said, look, can you back off on the knitting, please? Because, you know, funny. it's just going very, very crazy. You're sending out too socks, many jumpers, jumpers <laughs> scarves. You're knitting all the time. What are you knitting? Knit- She's knitting, knitting. Yeah, um, yeah. Of course, you know, and it became an obsession and she had to have the knitting needles taken away from her. That is very um, cool. Yeah, so uh, Enrique's going to need a hobby. What do you think about the sentencing? 22 years, it's the longest sentence uh, it's a given lot. to any of the Proud Boys, uh, any of the Oath Keepers, any of those who uh, uh, were organising and behind the uh, uh, the January 6th uh, congressional riot. It's still hard to know what to call it. Yeah, yeah. Insurrection's <coughs> a good word. I don't know. You know, is it a 22? Tempting? You reckon it's worth it? I so if he gets 22, what's the drumstick get? 
<laughs> well, I mean, that is a fucking interesting one, isn't it? But like, <laughs> look, I think his contrition is made up. I think it's definitely trying to get. Yeah, that's uh, just the other thing. Know, the he, he, he showed no remorse until after his conviction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then no, it was kind of like, oh Jesus, I better try and better know, reduce my sentence. Suck in the judge here. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's not. And, a good uh, and the judge did note that. In fact, you have shown no remorse Ooh. until you were convicted. So That's have a lazy year. twenty-two years, Fuck and uh, so he's off to uh, he's off to a federal penitentiary. Yes, I'm going to say crochet, brochet. Brochet for him, Enrique. The proud brochets. Closer to home, two men charged with the old Parliament House fire on December 30, 2020, have also been convicted. They have. Nicholas Reed and Bruce Shillingsworth Jr., both 32 years old. Didn't know that before now. So Reed was found guilty of arson and destruction of Commonwealth property, and Shillingworth found guilty of aid and abet arson and destruction of Commonwealth property. Ooh. Now, Bruce Shillingsworth is the subject of too many references in the conditional release program to mention here. Yes, yeah, Represented right, himself right. and appeared in court dressed in traditional Indigenous clothing and markings. Yes, and he's a bit of he's known for a bit of soft sit nonsense, but we didn't hear any outrageous yeah, soft sit nonsense. Didn't, didn't in, go the full soft sit at defense. all. I was expecting a bit of pseudo law to sort of pop in there because he did defend. Uh, he did represent himself. Um, Nicholas Reed. Oh, it's a smart money. move. He had a um, he had a barrister. Well, I mean, look, you know, he was trying something on which a barrister would never do because they um, what's that have um, professional obligations to the court. Uh, Bruce Junior could try it on because he was he was defending himself. So he asked the jury not to do what was lawful but what was right. What so was the, right? The quote actually goes, "Ladies and gentlemen, as a jury." You have the ability to make a decision about what is right as opposed to what is lawful, which is probably not how the judge is going to direct you to <laughs> just at the end when the judge tells – I've done jury duty. They direct you. They, yeah, they give well, of course they do. Yeah, of course they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And have they, oh, you broken the law? Has, has the accused broken the law? And if so, probably guilty. So let's have that chat. Mm. And he said then uh, – and this is great. He's really trying this on. Because what is lawful has made a significant impact on our people. Mm. And I don't disagree with that. I just think you're an asshole for trying to use that to get out of trouble. Yeah. When really, really, I don't think that's the situation we're in here. Um, I think those laws uh, were awful, but you ain't that ain't it, buddy. Not you. Yeah, it's a little bit like Ned Kelly. A lot of sympathy towards Ken, uh, towards Kelly, particularly from Irish Australians. He's a fucking criminal. Yeah, look, I understand. If, I understand you didn't like police, but did you have to try and? destroy an entire train load of them. That was the plan, yeah, by the way. Really, to really, kill yeah. police by their hundreds. Yeah, great. Yeah. yeah I'm not so, a big fan of Kelly, personally. But uh, no, no, yeah. Not. So look, it didn't work. Uh they were both convicted. Uh yeah. good shot though. Good try. Good try. Uh, yeah, look, it is worth remembering the old Parliament House is a museum. The Museum of Australian Democracy, in fact, and it was open to the public at the time of the fire. You know, it was late in the year, Christmas period, all that sort of stuff, so it wouldn't mm-hmm. have been bursting with folk wandering around, but it was open and there were people who worked there in the building at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and this was a deliberately lit fire. And and everyone thinks, you know, goes, oh, but apparently when, when they were both both convicted, there was a sigh from from Shillingsworth oh. followers uh, in the courtroom. And I think, think one started crying. Yeah, what about the... What about that, you know, let it burn chant? Remember yeah. that? Yeah. 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 So, so what, are you, what, what are we looking at likely sentences uh, I don't there, know. Joe? I don't know. Look, I, you know, I think there will be a certain amount of lenience on various metrics, um, and I think well, they're going to get their ducks in order, you know, well, when the sentencing well, comes around. So both men will be sentenced on October 26. Yep. Bail was continued. What? Yeah. Yeah, I find that very difficult. Reed's living in Meetung in Victoria, which uh, is uh, the home of uh, a business council, mining council of Australia um, uh, executive, uh, yeah. also with the same name. Uh, and uh, and uh, Shillingsworth, what, what have you got any, you got any guarantees this guy's going to turn up on October 26th for his sentencing? Yeah, these people tend to make not turning up to court a bit of a sport. What is going on honest. in the ACT? This, this, I mean, when what normally happens was this in the in the event of a conviction for a, for a serious offence like arson that's caused five million dollars worth of damage with people inside being a little bit terrified. I must also add, just from a, from a both both chambers of 
the old parliament had to be cleaned. They were covered in soot and smoke and dust and things like that. Huge, uh, huge bill, but it was all insured, the Commonwealth, <laughs> as insurance. Um, and, and just the fact that they well, what would normally happen is that they would be remanded in custody waiting, awaiting sentencing. You would think, and then it goes toward their sentence, the time. And then it comes off their sentence. But yeah. the bail was continued. Yeah, Why? I find it very strange. Very, very strange. Well, it's the ACT is the answer. <laughs> and, 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 but it also would indicate that there's no, um, there's no, there's no sign that there will be custodial sentences yeah. applied to either one of them. We I don't. don't I just think that's crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and I do remember when the fire first broke out, there were, there were politicians running around going, well, you know, the, the people responsible should be uh, held to held to a, account under the law. And um, I just wonder if that's actually. Happened. Yeah, I'm not yeah. so sure. Bail but, uh, continued. Well, only in the ACT. Um, yep. yep, it's a bit like I that. Guess, I, I guess we should also mention Scientology member and cast member of that 70s show, which is a fucking awful sitcom, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I'm not a fan. No. Dan Masterson, who was sentenced to 30 years in prison for the rape of two women back when the show was a hit almost 20 years ago. That was done within 24 hours of us recording this. Uh, it's early Friday morning Australian time. The actor, notable for his role in that 70s show, was, uh, received a 30-year sentence. The jury had been unable to reach a unanimous verdict in relation to the accusations of a third woman. Uh, so those charges were declared a mistrial and prosecutors have said they do not intend to pursue them. They've mm-hmm. got their man, in other words. Masterson was convicted in May of drug and violently raping two women in, in a retrial after the first jury was unable to reach a verdict in 2022. He had been remanded in custody awaiting his sentencing. It's not the ACT in California. No. Uh, um, because he was deemed to uh, by the court to be a flight risk. Mm-hmm. The rapes occurred more than two decades ago with accusations first coming to light in 2017 as part of the Me Too movement. Interesting. So why did it take more than two decades to come to trial? That's mm. interesting. It happens. It, well, it, do, it does happen, but there are some specific um, yes, there are. matters yeah. here. There are. So during the trial, prosecutors argued that scientific Scientology officials had helped cover up the sexual assaults. This mm. is where it gets very, very juicy. At the time, Masterson and all three of his accusers were Scientologists. Several of the women said it took them years to come forward because Scientology officials discouraged them from reporting the rape to police. Oh, now, so that's a crime. That's a crime in Australia. Well, it, uh, it should uh, be. Uh, the, the, what, what the Scientology officials did. Yeah, uh, it fucking should be. Was actually, you know, pervert course of justice, pervert failed to justice, report. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got mandatory reporting over there, which is this, uh, you know, you cannot be a mandatory reporter and that's something that was in The Sound of Freedom uh, with uh, Tim Ballard and the law law firm that he employed were big fans of stopping LDS clergy from being mandatory reporters because they don't like reporting child abuse because it looks bad. Anyway. Yeah. So, well, yeah, yeah. Huh? That was a big thing. So one of the victims claimed that Scientology officials told her that she would be booted out of the cult, which is never fun, especially when you're just about to get feet number three, <laughs> you know? Bit. You get up to you're that level. On the fucking you're on cost. a sort of feet and level five. Oh, you're on a feet and roll. St- yeah, you know you you, you can really, you, you get people bowing and scraping at your feet. It's a sunken cost fallacy as well, you know, because you spent so much money getting there. You really, you know. So what she basically did is signed a non-disclosure agreement, accepted a payment of five hundred thousand dollars, and that was according to prosecutors. And basically, you know. Hush money from an organisation that just wanted this to go away. Yeah, there's a civil case underway too now. Um, yeah, good. We, Fuck him. Yeah. You know? So the women all say that when they reported Marston to the cult, they were told by senior Scientologists that they were not raped and they were yeah, well, put through an ethics program. Yeah. What that'll, the fuck? That'll stop you lying about all that rape. What the fuck? Fuck! Does that even mean? It sounds yes. so creepy. There's, an, there's another big, there's another big uh, civil case too, which involves three Australians, and that's being heard in Florida, uh, and that is basically a, um, a human trafficking civil ah, case. They love and, that. And Miss Cavage, the leader of of, uh, of Scientology, uh, was dodging was dodging process service, and the magistrate uh, in Florida has said, "We'll consider you served, David." 
Turn up. <laughs> so anyway, uh, now Masterson, Masterson, he's going to need probably a few more hobbies than Torres because he's doing the full 30. Um, uh, he is going to appeal apparently. And maybe yeah. he could ask David Miscavige to use some of those telekinetic powers because David Miscavige is a level 8 feet. Ooh, and that's that a big gives one. you that you know you can just move things around. No, 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 no. Be fantastic if you're cleaning up your garage. So he's just got telekinetic powers, but he doesn't know where his wife Shelley is. <laughs> yeah, because okay. she's, yeah. she's just disappeared. Yeah, but like I guess your telekinetic powers can only serve you so far, right? Fair enough. Well, like she know. might be doing she might be doing the ethics program. Oh. <laughs> We fired you, we sacked you, we dismissed you as what? As garbage, because that's all you are. You're a criminal, you're a traitor, and you're going to the biggest barbecue in history. So from Christmas dinner to you are the dinner. Thank you, that's what I'll go with. And today in Sovsits, a gathering of sheriffs has been organised in Cherokee County, North Carolina this weekend. But sheriffs from the county and more broadly in Western North Carolina are reluctant to say if they're going to attend. Come on, guys. RSVP. Show some fucking manners. (laughs) (laughs) It promises promises to be a ripping couple of days. Sadly, I wasn't invited, but I did get hold of one of the speakers at the event, founder of the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association, Richard Mack, Uh who's not just a soft sit, he's a sheriff. Sit. Ooh, that's fancy. That's a fancy sit. Now, anyway, look, I, I'll let him know as I may be. Um, oh, that's good. And, that's good. Uh, yeah, so these are sits not just with guns because everyone's got guns in the United States. Well, yeah, it's a true, bit of a misnomer, yes. but, 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 but uh, those who want guns have, tend to have a lot of them. Yes, um, yes. But they just not, don't just have guns, but they've got badges and legal authority on their turf, on their jurisdiction. Jurisdiction, yeah, yeah. Deeds and titles. Yeah, so look, it's um, it's problematic. You know, um, these are the sort of things where give these guys an inch and they'll take a mile, and give these guys a gun and they'll probably shoot someone. So Mac promotes a bogus and hugely dangerous notion that the legal authority county sheriff uh, within his or her jurisdiction supersedes that of local, state, or federal agencies, courts. Good. And legislative bodies, Good. meaning sheriffs can choose which laws they deem unconstitutional and therefore which laws they'll enforce. So Classic. federal laws, state laws, never mind any of that rubbish uh, and never mind any of your parliaments or congresses passing uh-huh. laws, I'm sheriff and I'm the boss. Exactly. It's common law because I'm common and I'm making up the law as I go along. So that's uh, that's the way uh, good old uh, Richard Mack thinks. Um, give us a quote from Richard, Joel, because this is a ripper. It is great. It's just so meaningless. It goes back, way back in old Anglo-Saxon law, way back then, the Sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> the Sheriff of Nottingham? Yeah, yeah. Is that a real thing? Um, uh, I'm not sure. Robin Hood, right? Robin yeah, Hood, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He's always been the ultimate protector of the people. I don't know if the sheriff. sheriff no, he was wasn't the, he the bad, bad guy? guy, Richard. What are he you was doing, the bad man? Guy, yeah. Thomas Jefferson called the sheriff the ultimate executive of the county. Okay, uh, so there doesn't seem to be really any question whatsoever that the sheriff is the ultimate authority in this county. In his county, yes, okay. that's that's what okay. uh, Richard Maxter said. Uh, sheriff of Just, Nottingham. Yeah, yeah, it's a really odd kind of reference. Robin Hood, Friar Tuck, all the gang, men in yeah, tights, okay. all that yeah, sort of men stuff. Men in tights, yes, but of the course. The sheriff yeah. of Nottingham was the bad guy, you fucking idiot, Richard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's just quite special, isn't it? I just don't know what to do with that. Uh, but I do like the fact that he's just making shit up and really going for it. And I imagine that he said that <laughs> with much more confidence than I did. Oh, he's so, a piece of work, this guy. I love him. So um, so Mac, the Arizona and former actual sheriff, he has sheriff. been a perennial indie GO, or, or GOP candidate, you know, independent GOP, depending on how the, the winds turn, in local elections, just being an electoral pest, I'm sure, garnering never more than around 3% of the vote. 
Uh, and he's also a former board member of the Oath Keepers. Until mm. now, I didn't even realize Oath Keepers had a board, but that's very fancy. Um, he was you know. a member of the board of the Oath Keepers and, and one of the few not serving long sentences in yes, US one of the federal very few. prisons. Uh, I like the idea of them having roles. In our court you know. roundup, in our court roundup, didn't get to as any Oath Keepers, but it's, it's a big hello now from the show to other members of the Oath Keepers. I've lost, hey guys. I've lost, <laughs> lost count of how many are behind bars now. It's got to be more than 20. Mm -hmm. And this includes one new entry uh, from a District of Columbia Attorney General's Office media release that revealed that Connie Meggs, 60, of Donellan, Florida, has been sentenced to 15 15 months in prison and 36 months of supervised release for, and I quote, actions and the actions of others which disrupted a joint session of the US Congress that was in the process of ascertaining and counting the electoral votes related to the 2020 presidential election. Fair enough. So back in May, Connie's brother, Kelly Meggs, fuck off Americans, what a name, Kelly Meggs. (laughs) Ginger. Yeah, that's exactly (laughs) what I thought first off. 53 years young, was sentenced to 12 years in prison and 36 months of supervised release. Oof. Oathkeeper Stuart Rhodes, 57 of Granbury, Texas. He's a bit better known. He was sentenced to 18 years in prison recently and 36 months of supervised release, which would be a real kick in the nuts at the end of 18 yeah. years. <laughs> You've done your just, come out. You're 75. And yeah. uh, I'm afraid we're just going to have to keep an eye on you. Yeah, you're going to get a pissed three off. Three more years. Yeah. 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 No good. No hookers here. So his is the longest sentence to date uh, related to the January 6th attack on the Capitol, Bef- except before, for before. Enrique Tarrio. Yeah, yeah. And as much as I hate Stuart Rhodes, he's a dick. You gotta, you gotta love the eye patch. Oh, you really do. Anywho, so brutal. Poor boy. Anywho, Mac and his good old boys promote good old fashioned white nationalism, yeah. gun nuttery, good. and a host of conspiracy theories, election denial, COVID vax nonsense, yep. general deep state paranoia, the full I cooker think- menu. They will host this meeting. Or Mac and his group will host this meeting this convention, if you like, in Cherokee County this weekend. Oh, sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, so yeah. the Southern Poverty Law Centre contacted a number of sheriffs in and around Cherokee County and got a swift no comment from all and sundry. So they're all mm. fucking in on it. Yeah, Mac often speaks at uh, John Burt Society Meets, which is kind of sort of the Ku Klux Klan without the Manchester. You yeah, know? they're not good people. Real uh, bedrocks of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories going way back. And, oh, and uh, massive, massive, uh, massive racists. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Charming guys. So that'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, like, good weekend. You know, nothing could possibly go wrong there. Long story short, Mac himself is in a little bit of trouble because his son, Richard Solon Mac, 44 years old, is facing a shitload of criminal indictments from a Warren County, Kentucky grand jury. Uh, so, you know... He's, up, he's on the hook. He's, he's going to court. It ain't yeah. New York. Better get a lawyer, son. Kentucky. Better get a real good one. Yeah. You know why you got to get a real good one? you got to get one who's happy to defend you for the 12 counts of child sexual abuse that you are on the hook for uh, from April 13th, 2022. Yeah, he was indicted on, on April 13th uh, last year. Mm. He faces four counts each of incest. First degree sodomy with a oh, victim God. younger than twelve, oh, come and on. first degree sexual abuse of victim of a victim less than twelve, uh, and the indictment refers to a male victim, obviously his son. Okay, yeah. So that's what's been alleged, allegedly, 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 allegedly. allegedly, allegedly I mean, allegedly. it would be hard to find a a, uh, a a more a more problematic indictment than. It's not great. Four counts in, in first degree sodomy, incest, incestual sodomy. Mm. Come on, man, don't do that. Just don't do that. So yeah, so that became from public records uh, from Hate Watch, um, you know, sort of watchdog group. And this is the second known child abuse investigation into Rich Solon Mac. He has form, but he was not charged as a result of the first investigation. No, but not the first time. Fuck knows there was probably a reason for it. Yeah, and Mac Senior, Sausage Sheriff, puts it all down to a messy separation between his son. And his son's former partner. Yeah, well, you see, um, let's just clarify here for a second. Um, child abuse does happen, but only Democrats. Oh, and, <laughs> and, and people in Hollywood. So Those you need stars. to understand that. You need to understand that. Uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, you know, they're just good old boys having good old times. Disgusting. Do not excuse pedophilia. You fucking creep. 
Anyway, so it was, of course, dad to the rescue when it was disclosed earlier that the constitutional sheriff's leader emailed the video related to an investigation into his son's alleged child abuse to penal country, penal county, Arizona Sheriff Mark Lamb in 2021 to ask if law enforcement could investigate the child's mother. Yes. Yeah, Interesting. So, so what, what he's done is the, the, the mother who's making these allegations has prepared a video um, and we don't know the contents of that video. In don't fact, want it to. was an, an MP4, and he's and and then Dad's got hold of that, and then flicked it to the county with jurisdiction uh, over two years ago, and said, "Look, you know, can you fit up the mother on a few charges?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what a fucking guy, eh? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So basically, Max Senior said, this is the video my son's ex-girlfriend put together to try and have him charged with child sex abuse. And this whole thing was basically saying that it involved a sex scene to get his son in trouble. Um, maybe your son should be in trouble because he's a fucking pederast. Um, what do you reckon? Well, allegedly 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 allegedly, 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 allegedly. But you see, that's the thing, man. Like, you know. Max shared the fucking video to ask about investigating the mother. Do you, like, mm. oh, by the way, I'm just dealing these drugs, um, but someone <laughs> bought them recently. I think you should get them on possession. That's right. The fuck are you talking about, you anus? So this is another quote, which is great, which is, this is from, uh, from the letter. We want to know if there are grounds to go after her criminally for doing this with the girls. Doing what? Yeah. Doing what? Again, oh my. again just a reminder that Mac Jr. is uh, alleged to have raped his own son. Yes. So I don't so, know what the girl's reference is there, but anyway, um, look, the video was sent as an MP4 file. It is now unopenable. The file was available until October 25, 2021, which was about a month after he'd sent it. That expiration date was set by the sender, not by any Penal, penal. <laughs> you, you feel like you want to say penal, but Pinal County Sheriff's Office account. Yeah, but Jesus fucking Christ! It's, it's worth remembering. This is a Kentucky grand jury, right? Yeah, Jesus. Now, I mean, this is not New York. This is no. not some Democrat Blue Haven. This is a Kentucky grand jury. When we list the charges, he's facing a trial. Incest, rape of a child under 12, 12 counts of incestual pedophilia. Yeah, there are a strange bunch down there. I went to a music festival there and it was odd, odd crowd, quite violent. Anyway, so three weeks ago, Rich Max attorney filed documents that alleged child's mother was disgruntled after contentious custody and time-sharing litigation. Very loyally speak there. The attorney also claimed the mother has made six false allegations of various types of abuse against Rich Mack. Rich Mack Jr., yes. Are they? Are they false, though? Mm. So the mother has made no public comment, and two years later, her father-in-law's accusations have amounted to nothing. Oh, so no date has been set for Rich Sol and Mac's trial, and, uh, yeah, it seems like the girls. So, we, you know. will, we will be keeping yeah. an eye on that one. Don't worry about that. And we'll oh, ignore yeah. the soft shit scoreboard today, but what Dad's intervention amounted to, certainly in an Australian jurisdiction, would have been an attempt to pervert the course of justice. Mm -hmm. But nothing has yet occurred to Max Senior, so he's free to have his good old boy weekend in Cherokee County. Yep, maybe he'll uh, go and spend some time in a van down by the river. It has been a huge week of Pete Evans huge. with the recently uncancelled Craggy Face Conspiracy Cook having another crack at the media circuit. He Give me a shot. It. He loves the mainstream media. What he could says you possibly he possibly lose? It, but he loves it. Yep. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it when they love him, which is all the time, which is absolutely stuns me to know about. So Dave Husey Hughes. Good uh, Carlton man. Is, uh, no, fuck him. He's uh, a mad Carlton man. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, he's, go on. He's Sorry. also a fuckwit. Uh, so he yeah. posted. He hosted Pete in his radio show after they had a big long chat at an event. They were uh, Pete's words um, on his Telegram. It was an instant friendship, and it's funny how an opportunistic cult leader can seduce an idiot in just one small conversation. Just. Funny, funny, yeah. We've seen it all before. So Dave Hughes, a man rarely known for his intellect, decided mm, no. to platform a man who is widely considered to hold neo-Nazi beliefs, including Holocaust denial. Mm. Now. Thankfully, David avoided that topic like a good boy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Good boy. Don't good go boy. there. Don't go there. So Pete opens by calling Husey a legend. Oh, Pete, you shouldn't have, but that's how you got on the show, right? Being <laughs> yeah. so lovely, yeah. you know. Then it moves into interview territory and 
fuck me do I use that term loosely? Yeah, so I guess. I'm sitting there thinking, let's see what will come out of this one. I mean, the, the Kyle and Jackie Owen was an absolute train wreck where Kyle was like, oh, but fucking vaccines are bad, right? I just, I, I wasn't sure. Will Pete be given a softball interview to recover his damaged image or will the host of the show actually bother to do a moment of research, or their producers at least, and ask him actual questions about his so-called cancellation? Now, I think we all know the answer here, mm-hmm. um, but let's Been go into the this. details. Yeah, we have. So Aaron, who I actually didn't think I knew of, but it turns out it's Aaron Mullen, um, who, uh, you know, Minnie Mullen. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we know her. Um, so I hope that she wouldn't be a complete sponge. She is. She announces that she had her producers make a list of controversies that, you know, looking back, maybe Pete was onto something, you know. She was like, oh, hold on. So I'm looking through this and, you know, looking back, maybe. Was it maybe, the full list? Maybe maybe was it the full list of neo Nazi stuff? And all they do, we do the yeah. neo Nazi stuff. What did you think your dad was into neo Nazis? Because I don't think he was. I don't know. But anyway, look, you know, luckily he doesn't have to worry about that now, right? So I'm just really, yeah, I'm just. Yeah, I don't want to say anything too defamatory because, yeah. It's just dumb. It's just dumb FM radio stuff, isn't it? So dumb. So fucking dumb. So Pete claims the doctors he's interviewed, which are all fucking grifters, Peter McCulloch, you know, Rob Malone, usual cockheads. They say that it takes about 20 years for medical knowledge to become mainstream. Now, I'm not even sure if they said that, but they're all nodding (laughs) and agreeing, you know. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And this is the dumb thing. It's like he knows a secret, but it takes 20 years for normies to find out about it. And in that time... He's then proven right. And this is the thing. They're totally into this. Well, so, yeah, yeah, what, in 20 years, people will be right about things like uh, vaccine-induced AIDS, you know, the whole yeah. depopulation program, uh-huh. the nanobots, all the rest. Yeah, okay, yeah, no. Nah. So Aaron has a really cool whack about cancel culture, which is great because you've got to do that. You know, yeah, you've yeah, got to yeah. appease to your Western Sydney base because mm-hmm. uh, cancel culture is bad, uh, mm-hmm. which is cool. Uh, but the underlying thread here is that Nazis are just misunderstood because, you know, Hitler was a top bloke. Because either you love dogs, you knew, yeah, he painted them too. Either you knew about this, or you didn't, and you're a moron. <laughs> so we need to just assume. Let's just assume they didn't know about the neo-Nazi stuff because they failed to mention it at all. It would have been it probably look if they did know, they probably thought, well, it'll just make Peter a bit uncomfortable if we bring it up. Yeah, it would make him uncomfortable because he's a fucking neo-Nazi in denial. <laughs> I mean, like, Dr. Kaz went through... Anyway, we'll, we'll go through this. So when it comes down to it, if you were to look up Pete Evans, within the first page of results, you get his neo-Nazi past. But instead, they went to the biocharger. Went to the biocharger. Everyone goes to the biocharger. And they gave it to him. They're, oh, bye, bye, give it to him. They love him a softball, which he handles masterfully. It's the same question. Didn't you say it had a recipe for COVID? No, I just said that it has thousands of recipes and one of them's for COVID. Oh, yeah, it's not cure. It's not a cure. I never said that, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, for me... But it's a light show, isn't it? Yeah, recipes. It's, what? it's a fucking LED thing. It's, it's bullshit. It is a $20,000 gimmick. But you know what? I actually don't care that much. I think the TGA should regulate this and I think that we should protect idiots from themselves. But I also think that selling a few woo machines to idiots isn't a big deal. I don't yeah. care about that. That is not the reason why I detest this man. I've known a lot of people who sell bullshit to idiots and yeah. I quite like them and I don't really care. It's fine. You know, a fool in his money, so fucking be it. So Pete is then given the opportunity to repeat the myth that COVID vaccines do not prevent transmission. Everyone's nodding because vaccinated people got COVID. Now, I don't need to explain to you guys why that's dumb. We, we, don't, we, again, we, we, we don't, but it, it, it's just like anyone who has an influenza vaccination yeah, you can, can get, get influenza, yeah, right? Yeah, you can. Can it get just, influenza. It reduces it severity. Reduces the severity, reduces yeah. the symptom. Yeah, yeah, which is actually I, I don't know nice. why, why, why this stuff is become. It really irritates me that this has become almost a, 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 a truism. Well, it's been accepted, but the, the problem that's really annoying is, so we've gone on and on about the fact that, like, you know, the transmission study wasn't done, and that's the reason why they can say this. But the fact that it reduces severity, it also reduces duration, and it also reduces the chance of getting it means mm. that, yes, it does reduce transmission, you yes. fuckhead. Yes, it does. It just has not had a peer-reviewed large-scale study to prove it, which is something that you guys only care about when it suits you because none of the shit you say is actually proven by a study of the same quality that you demand of this transmission claim. So shut the fuck up (laughs) about 
anything Shut that up, hasn't Hughes. been proven Shut through up, a Hughes. peer-reviewed study. It just, what, do you, what do you fucking know about uh, fucking Hughes medical just, science? Hughesy, you fucking moron. Hughesy, Hughesy barely even touched the sides of this. To be honest, Erin Mullen was the fucking star of the show and she had nothing of interest to say. So, look. He then gets the opportunity to wax on about nutrition, and I'm fine with this. Like, keto is not for everyone. I don't really give a shit. It's fine. If you don't want to eat carbs, I don't really give a fuck. Oh, they do the bone, they do the bone, bone broth? No. So when it comes to the bone <laughs> broth, um, that's the issue. His approach to nutrition is fine unless you're an infant because there was no mention of the Bubba Yum Yum recipe that had that beef broth recipe with the liver in it. That's not. Everyone no. says that the beef broth was bad for the baby. The beef broth wasn't the issue. It was the liver that he chucked in there. Now, this dangerous recipe for infants was pitched to a publisher who refused to release it. Pete being Pete didn't fix the problem. He just simply bumped up the recommended age for the death broth and then found a publisher that would actually let this harmful advice be published. Just take the liver out of the recipe, Pete. But he just like, what is like, he can't be wrong. Like, I don't understand this guy. It's the narcissism. It's the narcissism. Like, it's just fucking next level. But they didn't mention that. So this, this, this leaves listeners wondering, quite rightly, why was he cancelled? Why, why, you... why was everyone so rude to Pete? Why was everyone so rude to Pete? Because I've listened to this radio segment and I can't see the biochargers. It's no big deal, right? Yeah. It, it makes total sense for people to be listing that and walking away thinking he's Might been... have killed a couple of kids with a bone broth, but, you know, plenty of them out there. Plenty no more where got, that came from. They didn't even come close to talking about it. It's fucking embarrassing. You know, look, so it's all out there. You know, all of this is so out there. It's not secret information, but I'm not expecting your average fucking drive time radio listener to go home and Google it. Sure. It's not going to take fucking 20 years to the mainstream to know about it because it's only you have to do a quick, quick cursory Google search to find all this stuff out. But not only do we know about his fucking terrible, terrible beliefs and his awful ideology, but also a friend of the podcast, Dr. Kaz Ross, reported on him being groomed by neo-Nazis, which is something Tom Tanaki told me about, which blew, blew my mind. Uh, and this is what got him to the place that landed their shit. It wasn't yeah. biochargers. It wasn't COVID. It was the Nazi meme. It's the Nazism, mate. It was the Nazi meme. So you've got to ask, did the producers put that on the list? And if so, why wasn't it discussed? Well, it would have made Pete a bit uncomfortable. Well, look, Erin asked for a list of controversies. She was going to put the hard questions in, and she made it sound like that was her intention. Yeah. But they missed this one? How did, how did you miss this one, guys? Yeah. And not only this, but I then tried to mention this on their YouTube channel, and within a minute, my comment was deleted. <laughs> I mean, this is a conspiracy. I'm being censored by the mainstream media. <laughs> this is what it's like to be a cooker. This, this is the radio's YouTube channel. Yeah, the um, the YouTube channel that had the Pete Evans video on it had 55 views. Um, so Pete's obviously a ratings winner still. Yeah, he's just, um, yeah, yeah people love him. People yeah. still love him. Well, 55 oh, people do. Pure fucking gold. Uh, so, yeah, of course, uh, that's that's just me. But, look, it's just more airhead breakfast radio bullshit with idiot hosts who have absolutely no fucking interest in meaningful dialogue. It's a puff piece to play on the idea of how cancel culture is terrible, everyone's a victim in the culture wars, and he's just a good guy trying to get by. Never mind the Nazi stuff. Don't know about the Holocaust denial. No one cares about that anymore. Oh, it was ages ago. We've got to move on. It's a bit awkward. On. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was ages ago. Move on. Ago. You know, it was ages no, ago. we'll talk about the biocharger instead. For fuck's Jesus Christ, yet another disappointing experience of Pete stepping out of his bubble and stepping back into the line. I don't know why you expect so much from FM radio, man. I mean, Husey and Aaron Mullen, I mean, it's not exactly, you know, it's an, not a an intellectual yeah. night out, is it? No, um, it really fucking isn't. But yeah, yeah. still. So you have been listening. To the Conditional Release Program with your host, Jack the Insider and Joel Hill. Jack can found on Twitter on at Jack the Insider and Joel on at Crunchy Moses with a K. It's on our Facebook page you can find fairly easily. And if you enjoy the episode, please share it on social media because we just, you know, more listeners, more everything, more happiness. Just, you know, make it happen. Mm -hmm. And we have a Patreon to help keep this sustainable. It's bloody time consuming and we still mm -hmm. have to pay rent. That's Help right. keep the lights on. Yeah, for as little as five dollars a month, you'll have access to all sorts of bonus content, including a weekly premium episode. We try and make it worth your while, and we get to say things in there that are a bit more spicy because there's not too many of you listening, which makes it way less actionable in court, which we love. <laughs> yes, it's uh, it's where we like to go a little bit nuts. And yes. finally, all feedback, tips, and death threats should be sent to the conditional release program at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you, even if it's to say that Mountain Dew have just released a flavour called Podcaster Execution. And we're about to be obliterated by lasers. Fuck, Joel. Get the paint roller and some blue paint. Get it on the oh, roof. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Just blue paint. Blue paint. Blue it's paint. Fine. Blue, 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 blue. Take a deep Pale breath. blue. Deep blue. Oh, navy blue. blue myself. Yeah, you'll be The fine. old dark navy blues. I know. It's going to be. Look, it's a the sign. Pale, the pale, I'll do pale blue. You do dark blue. And let's see who lives. Carlton's going to win. 
It's a sign. <laughs> it's a sign. It's predictive programming. The Mountain Dew has <laughs> Mountain Dew has decided Carlton's going to win. Well, I wish you the best of luck, but also I wish Sydney some luck, not as much luck. Time I have feel. not a bad bone in my body for the Sydney Swans Football Club, yeah, so no, um, may hearts. the best team win. Yeah. Uh, that's all tonight, folks. But by the time you listen to this, we will know the result. Um, but uh, in the meantime, let's just get painting our houses blue, just in case. Now you'll know why Jack is either in a good mood or a bad mood next uh, next podcast. No, you won't be able to talk to me for a good 48 hours if we lose. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, it's been great. Again, listeners, thanks for your time. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next time. See ya. I don't think I ever want to talk to any of those people. Fuck me! You guys are bastards! <laughs>